This is Nine News at Five. Good evening. A prison worker has been arrested, accused of stealing from inmates. Live to Beth Excel with more. Beth, he faced court a short time ago. He did, but due to a suppression order, we can't reveal to you his identity, and that's due to the ongoing police investigation. What we can tell you is that he is a staff member at the Adelaide Remand Centre. He was arrested overnight and charged with one count of aggravated theft. It's likely that charge is aggravated because of exactly where he works. He's reportedly accused of stealing money belonging to inmates over the past three months that was stored in a secure area at the facility, allegedly pocketing anywhere up to $100,000. He spent last night in police custody. Ordinarily, where he would now be sent is the very place that he works, and so he's seeking release on home detention. A magistrate has ordered a report to see if he's suitable, and he'll return here to the magistrate's court next week for a decision on that, Alice. Beth, thank you. Nine News understands police have growing suspicions about the discovery of a man's remains in the Hale Conservation Park this week. Major crime detectives were among the police called to the site near Williamstown after the bones were found by a walker on Tuesday and are now actively monitoring the case. However, it could take up to a week or more for a post-mortem to confirm anything further about a cause of death or the man's identity. A fugitive caught by police at Quorn in the Flinders Ranges has now officially been charged with faking his own death. Police had a warrant out for the arrest of the man, who can't be named due to a suppression order, when his abandoned car, some clothing and footprints leading into the water were found at Aldinger Beach two weeks ago. The 22-year-old was taken into custody more than 350 kilometres from there yesterday morning. He faced court at Port Augusta today. Two people have been arrested over a drug seizure at a Parry Hills home. Police finding thousands of LSD and Xanax tablets, amphetamine, cannabis and fantasy, as well as a pill press and cash. A man and woman from the home, both 20 years old, are facing trafficking and possession charges and they've been ordered to face court next month. South Australians filling up with diesel are being charged more than they should be, according to the state's peak motoring body. The wholesale cost of diesel has fallen 40 cents a litre in the last month, but the price at the Bowser has dropped by just half of that. Fuel experts say the one in five motorists who use diesel are paying 14 cents more than they should be. And what we'd like to see is at least another half of that come down to give the small businesses and the, the people who are using diesel some relief because they don't have the benefit of a price cycle like other petrol users do and therefore they're really stuck with that, the price they have to pay, particularly in the regions. The price of unleaded petrol has plummeted in recent weeks, sitting at around $1.60 a litre. The site for the first of five new ambulance stations has been chosen. The land is on the corner of Port Rush and McGill Roads at Norwood. A new crew made up of 16 paramedics and 12 ambulance officers also came online today to be based at Parkside until the new station is built. The government says that's expected to be in early 2024. We know that the, the eastern suburbs, amongst other areas, has actually been one of the missing pieces of the puzzle that has resulted in backfilling occurring across the system and, and overwhelming the ambulance service. The government also announced today that 107 extra private health beds are being made available to public patients to ease hospital pressure. Well, watching the footy inside Adelaide Oval is about to be given a shake-up with the sale of alcohol in cans, given the tick of approval. Oliver Haig has more on this story. Ollie, what led to the change? Well, Alice, Adelaide Oval Management tells me it's one of the last stadiums in the country where the sale of beer must only be in plastic cups. But that is all about to change with the Liquor and Gambling Commissioner granting approval for alcohol to be sold in cans as well as in plastic cups at the Oval. Now, this is a 12-month trial and expected to be rolled out in time for the Sandful final series. And it's all in a bid to reduce plastic waste and give footy fans more options. But there are conditions. Signage must be be displayed on the big screens warning fans against throwing cans and if they're found to be they face a two-year ban from Adelaide Oval. Despite that the police union has labelled this a massive about face by the police commissioner and it simply dismisses officers safety concerns. Here's how the Oval responded. 
our fans tell us that's what they want and we're, we're really delighted that we can work with SAPO and get this outcome for our, for our fans. What I can say is no member of the public um, or anybody other than having the conversation with SAPO objected to the licence or had an interest in, in our licence application. Now the reception from footy fans has been mostly positive, at least the ones that we've spoken with today. Hear from them in Nine News at Six, as well as potential changes to the beer menu. Alex, uh, Alice. Okay, Ollie, thank you. Well, there's no immediate relief in sight for the cost of living crisis gripping Australia. Treasurer Jim Chalmers today delivering a very downbeat economic forecast for the coming 12 months. This update from politics reporter Ashley Wick. Well, everyday essentials like petrol and groceries are...